Should XMP void your warranty? And why should it or should it not void your warranty? Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Today we're gonna be discussing XMP. This is mostly in response to the Jay's Two Cents video and the um, NZXT build and how they were saying they weren't gonna warranty XMP in their own builds. Jay pretty much covered it mostly in his video, except there's one thing he said in there that I do not agree with when he said he's never killed a chip enabling XMP before. Which is, which is possible, I mean, don't get me wrong, but there is a reason why the ma most manufacturers don't warranty XMP. And I'm gonna explain why and show you why. And you guys, as frame chaser community, you need to be in the know about this stuff so that you don't kill your own chips. And that's what I'm here for. So with XMP, when you enable it, it, it changes your memory timings, your memory speed, and it changes three different voltages on your motherboard. And the amount that it changes those voltages actually depend on the motherboard too. It's not, it's not built into the RAM itself. So let's say, for example, you have a kit that's 4000 C17, which is the kit I'm going to be using today. That is an XMP of 1.35 volts on the actual DRAM sticks. Now the next part, the two voltages that I'm gonna bring up here, VCCSA and VCCIO. First one is system agent, second one is IO for input output. That's, that's mostly your um, memory controller and PCI Express controller. And what happens with those two is the motherboard manufacturer has its own algorithm or database of memory speeds and timings. So let's say, for example, you have 9900KA, 9900KB. The motherboard, well, most of them don't have a way to tell how good the silicon quality is on the memory controller. All they know is that the, low, the crappiest chip that they've ever tested needed this much voltage to make it work. So then what, you, what happens when you enable XMP on this memory kit, let's say, it's going to say, oh crap, he has a 9900K, he has these memory sticks at this speed. To make sure that it works, we have to pump in 1.4 volt VC, VCCSA and 1.4 volt VCCIO. And that is why your warranty, your warranty gets void. Those voltages will kill your chip over, over maybe within the year, I would say, depending on how high it goes. Now, is it the fault of the manufacturer, like NZXT? No. Is it the fault of the Ace of Asus or Gigabyte or MSI? Maybe, but it's also not their fault. They just have to make it work. Because if it doesn't, if let's say if you enable XMP and you just get a boot loop all of a sudden, you're going to think the motherboard is crap. And if it works on somebody else's motherboard, you're going to think, oh, this guy's motherboard is better, so I'm going to go with this one. They don't care that it kills your CPU, and, and, you're, and the customer is ignorant enough to not know that either. At the end of the day, the onus is always going to be on you to make sure that your things are running safely. Don't rely on anybody else for warranty. What, what system integrators should be doing is manually testing and setting SA and IO themselves. I know that would take a hell of a long time, but I mean, you guys got to do it if you want to warranty your systems. If even if, like, you know what I mean? If, if you're going to pump 1.4 volts SA into a chip and kill it, you, you put the time, put the work in ahead of time to make sure you don't have a bunch of RMAs happening all of a sudden, right? That's what I do when I sell PCs. So anyway, quickly to prove my point here, I'm going to take this, the machine I'm actually recording on right now. And I, I literally just tested it. And unfortunately, for some reason in hardware info and IDA64, it doesn't actually show the VCCSA voltage on this one. But this is a 9900K editing box that I'm using as an example right now. And it, for the DDR4 4000 RAM that I have in there, it only requires 1.15 IO and 1.2 SA. 
If I enable XMP on this motherboard with these RAM sticks, it gives me 1.35 SA and 1.25 IO. And that's actually not that bad. I've seen much worse. Um, I think it's because it's a two dim board micro ATX or mini ITX that um, it doesn't need as much SA to get the higher speeds. But let me show you what happens with my Z490 Asus, uh, Asus build. All right, so I brought my personal rig down here just to show this to you guys. This is a 10900K uh, Asus Maximus 12 Hero. Uh, four sticks of 17,000... Uh, 4,000 C17. And what we're going to do here first, I'm going to load... Okay, I'm going to load BIOS defaults here. Where are we here? Load optimized defaults. Yes. All right. So all should be default now. Let's save and quit quickly. Save. Yes. All right. Let's see what it gives us. All right. We're coming back in here. Let's see. Everything auto, 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 blah, blah, blah. So... The I.O. right now... Ah, I can't move the mouse right now. The I.O. right now is 1.056. Ah, oh, sorry, that's that's the I.A. The, the S.A. voltage. S.A. is 1.056. I.O. is 0 0.96. That is at, what, DDR 2400? 2133. So that's obviously... It's going gonna, it's gonna to need nothing. Now, I know that this RAM on XMP works fine at 1.22 SA and 1.2 IO. Let's see what happens if I just enable XMP on this profile. XMP 4,17.17, all four sticks. And it should have the voltage at 1.35, done. And then the other two are auto. It's not gonna set that. That doesn't come from the RAM sticks. We're gonna save and exit. Save and exit. Booting back up in here. Extreme profile. So we're at RAM speed is 4,000 now. Everything else is still stock. Let's see what the voltages are. System agent 1.408. VCC IO 1.312 Asus This will literally degrade my chip in a year like what like Like what are you doing and this is why manufacturers do not warranty XMP and I don't blame them This is a shit show It's actually almost to the point where if you are dealing with a average consumer, don't recommend anything faster than 3200. So that the, like this is going to kill the person's chip. You cannot, you cannot enable XMP and leave it alone with this fast of a RAM speed on, I mean, at least on this ACES board, right? Um, let's try the XMP2 and see what it does. The XMP2 is actually the same, but I think it just has more aggressive um, sub-timings. XMP2, save and exit. And you can, you can literally, yeah, I, yeah, it's just more aggressive secondary timings. But you can, you can literally do this on any motherboard manufacturer. And the faster the RAM and the, the larger capacity RAM that you have, it is going to destroy your chip enabling XMP and the manufacturer and ZXT shouldn't be recommending chips this fast if they're not going to warranty it right let's see if it changed anything here nah same all right so yeah 1.408 1.31 the IO voltage is probably fine but that 1.4 SA is literally unacceptable when all it needs is 1.22. But like, 
It's also not Asus' fault because it could have been a complete lemon of a chip and actually need 1.4. But then you wouldn't run the RAM speed that high anyway, right? But Asus doesn't care. They want to sell the board, right? They're, they're not on the hook for your CPU, Intel is, or the system integrator is, right? Anyway... So unfortunately, I don't have any RAM kits that are slower than 4,000. So I can't test an XMP on a 32 or a 36 kit for you guys. Uh, all I have is 4,000 plus kits. So yeah, but from, from my experience, if I ever actually just enabled XMP and left it alone, my chips would not last long at all. And it's... As a informed consumer, I always... Never leave anything to anybody else. Always leave it to yourself to make sure that, like, just don't trust anybody. Like, that's a, that's a bad saying, too. Like, if if things like this, uh, man, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, do your research. If it's intimidating and you don't know how to deal with it, buy a PlayStation or an Xbox. That's what those are for. Um, I guess now you can buy NZXT, um, builds and they will warranty the XMP. If you are going to buy from a system integrator, read the fine print, make sure they warranty the XMP. When you get the computer, look at what those voltages are and lower them and keep stress testing them until you get those things as low as possible. There's no reason to keep those things that high. Uh. Subscribe to the video if you found this content useful. And uh, I think that's it for this one, guys. I just wanted to do a quick little video on... It's... You don't blame NZXT and the manufacturers for not, warranty, not warrantying XMP. Because they know this goes on. Like... The choice is either not warranty it or don't sell the PC, right? Or spend X amount of man hours testing various voltages for SA and IO. So it's nobody's fault, really. It's just the nature of silicon quality. But um, yeah, anyway, like, subscribe, do all that uh, YouTube uh, SEO stuff for me. And make sure you guys take care of your own hardware. Don't rely on anybody to maintain and keep your stuff safe. Push it, but keep it safe. And chase those frames, guys. Talk to you later.